guys, welcome back to another season of Witticisms. I'm Mary. And I'm Soren. And here's what's going on this week in world news. First on our list, a man was charged with punching a 78-year-old in the face after he was accused of taking too many Nutella waffle samples. The man in question, a Derek M. I can't pronounce his last name, Gahara G. Let's just call him Derek G. Like Kenny G, only his passion is for waffles instead of jazz. Derek G apparently sampled multiple Nutella waffles at a Costco in Burbank, before the older man behind him mentioned that Derek shouldn't take so many because he also wanted to sample. Derek then responded by punching the 78-year-old in the face, proving to the world once and for all that chocolate is serious business and should be our first priority should the apocalypse befall us. The man was hospitalized and Derek was arrested. If convicted, he faces up to 11 years in prison, but he will have quite the story to tell his prison mates. What are you in for? Attempted murder, how about you? I punched an elderly dude of some, some Nutella waffles. Dude, what is wrong with you? For a more depressing topic, the people of Somerville, Massachusetts hosted their own pity party where citizens could wallow in sadness, which included wearing pajamas, binging on ice cream, and listening to sad songs. Picket signs depicted teardrops and sorrowful words were held by small children. The crowd consisting of mainly a mix between emotionally confused teenagers and the presidential candidates who have yet to rise past 0% in the polls. Trying to cut back on your nightly snacks of peanut butter sandwiches? What will be easier after we tell you this story? Former, former peanut company executive Stuart Parnell has been sentenced to 28 years in prison after shipping knowingly tainted products. This was first discovered after the jars of company's peanut butter was linked to a recent outbreak of salmonella, causing nine deaths. Investigators found the company's plan to possess leaky roofs, roaches, and rats. Parnell's family asked Judge Lewis Sands to show mercy in the sentence, but they were not well appeased. The judge ruled that Parnell's actions were driven simply by the desire to profit, and then this is commonly and accurately referred to as greed. And with the judicial disgust dwelling in his soul, Judge Sands brought down his tiny hammer of justice upon the great mahogany desk of intolerance. Bam! Anyway, Executive Parnell has expressed being personally embarrassed, humiliated, and morally disgraced by what happened, which are all common symptoms of getting cautitis, a disease that unfortunately cannot be used as an excuse for early release. Look out, Donald Trump. There might be another CEO that's even more evil than you. Martin Shkreli is a pharmaceutical CEO who just bought the rights to Daraprim. Daraprim is a drug that is used to treat toxioplasmosis. Toxioplasmosis is an infection you get when your immune system is unable to work, typically only seen in people dealing with cancer or AIDS. Before Shakrilli purchased the drug, people were able to purchase the drug for $13.50 per pill. After the purchase, he raised the price to $750 per pill. He claims that the price increase will actually make the drug more, more available to the public. This is not the first time Shakrilli has done this. In 2014, he purchased the drug company Retrofin, then hiked their kidney medication, Thyrolia, up from $1.30 per pill to $30 per pill. He claims that the money used from the increase will go to funding more research for alternative medication and new drugs so that Darprim isn't the only drug for toxioplasmosis. Couple things. Nobody forced you to take over this drug company so saying you need to make a profit from it is absolutely insane. Just don't buy those drug companies. Second, I highly doubt he actually fund new research, but if he actually does, I'm sure the drug won't even have a cost. They're just going to take your soul in exchange for being able to live on this garbage planet just a little bit longer. Former Pittsburgh Penguin star Yaramir Yager was caught up in a blackmail selfie scandal gone wrong this week. An Instagram model named Catherine from Moravia tried to blackmail Yager by sending him a photo of them in bed together she took while he was asleep. Unfortunately for Catherine, she didn't realize that a 43-year-old guy would love to have a photo of himself with an 18-year-old motto posted online to boost his image. He refused to pay her the money and she posted the photo like she said she would. The photo has now become one of the biggest Instagram memes of the year. 
Look, Catherine, I'm not advocating you for being a homewrecker, but next time, don't try to blackmail a guy known for partying with a photo of him sleeping next to a model. Get him where it hurts, like a photo of him crying while watching The Notebook. If you're going to blackmail someone, at least do it correctly. IUP officials are planning to cut funding for the Haven Project, a campus organization that helps address and educate students on domestic violence and abuse. This marks the worst decision made by IUP in the history of, well, ever. With the four reported rapes that have occurred on campus since the beginning of the semester, the Haven Project needs more emphasis than ever. Not only is this an issue on our campus, but campuses nationwide are also dealing with sexual assault. With the, with the culture that we live in, it's incredibly sad and unfortunate to see something so important not be taken seriously. Here's a message for everyone. Vape. Don't rape. I'm Mary. And I'm Soren. Here's what's new in entertainment. On Monday, the Jerry Springer Show celebrated its 25th anniversary of being on television. How it managed to stay on the air for a quarter of a century remains a mystery. Springer continues to host the show until the year 2018, or until he croaks, which by the looks of it, may be next month. Viewers can look forward to more hair pulling, punches to the face, underage white trash high school girls flashing their boobs for beads. Congrats to all your success, Jerry. Do you guys think it's time to pull the plug? I think it is. Uh, he's been around for a long time. The thing he? is, I've never seen a Jerry Springer episode. Like mm -hmm. a full one. So you've never heard anybody chant Jerry? I mean, I know the chant. Like Jerry, I, I, was, I was watching, and then my mom heard it. She's like, turn that <laughs> off. So I was like, um, when I used to stay home sick from school, yeah. always watch Jerry. Oh, I, I think Jerry, Jerry's iconic. Jerry is it, iconic. It sucks, but it's but great. There's a lot of Sucky new TV. wave. There's a lot of new wave people coming in at that type. You yeah. know, like Maury. He's I think he's a little younger. He's a little younger, yeah. not Maury too much. He's not as raunchy as Jerry. Not as yeah. raunchy. It's true. That's Jerry's true. just so like, you just question. That is life. true. That is <laughs> true. It makes you really question. Like, did, uh, is she really a hooker? Is she? Yeah. Is, is, <laughs> is he really the dad? Is that <laughs> they, they do that on Jerry too? That's uh, Jerry gets pretty crazy. Like. But I, th I think I, uh, I think it's time to pass the reins to somebody else. Like you know how the Tonight Show, Jay Leno yeah. gave it to Jimmy yeah. Fallon. Well, well, Jerry, the time's up. Time to change it to somebody else. Like give it to somebody like Bob Saget or something. He'd make Bob it pretty Saget. fun. Bob Saget. I'm nominating Bob Saget. So if you're ever watching yeah. this, Bob Saget, you should take vote over for Jerry. Bob. Yeah, seriously, That's I I'd vote for Bob Saget. I would too. I mean, he's so good on Full House. You know, he's strict with those. <laughs> that house is crazy. It's a crazy madhouse there. Absolutely. Yeah, I I think they should give it to him. Agree. Yeah. So, yeah. that's that's what I think. All right. Oh, that way. The 67th Primetime Emmys broke records and made history on Sunday night as Viola Davis became the first African American woman to win Best Lead Actress in Drama Series. For a woman who acts in a low-budget soap opera, General Hospital star Nancy Lee Graham was quite the shit-talker on Twitter the night of the awards, bashing Davis multiple times if she were smart, she wouldn't blatantly disrespect Viola, considering she knows how to get away with murder. Did you guys watch the Emmys? What did you think? Was there anything you were surprised by? Uh, I, I watched, I caught some of the Emmys. Uh, I thought Andy Samberg was hilarious. Andy Samberg. Oh, Andy, Sa man. Andy Samberg. Uh, I don't know. He made a couple jokes that yeah. made me like, ooh. Like, I, I mean, he has, he has made a long run from SNL. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. He definitely was a, a staple on that show for yeah. quite a while. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, he. I'm just gonna go on Andy Samberg right now because, like, I, I don't know. I, I thought he was like, because you know, there's been some bad hosts. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, you watch oh, the Oscars. Yeah. Like Neil Patrick Harris didn't do mm. too well at the Oscars this past year. And but like, it's nice to see like Andy new, Samberg yeah, come people, come on yeah. there and, and and do something like that. Especially you know, people were giving him a lot of crap for his Brooklyn Nine Nine series last year, and he won an Emmy for it. And now he's <laughs> yeah. the host of the Emmys, and you know, so I think he's doing pretty well for himself. But yeah, I, don't know. I mean, I think overall this was a good Emmys. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah, this year. Yeah, I agree. I don't know why that the General Hospital lady has anything to say about yeah. Viola. Like, I think Viola did great. I mm -hmm. absolutely she deserved it, and it's yeah, about I time agree. that happened. And like today, I don't understand why it, sh it shouldn't be a shock anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> not at all. No. That's why. But 
definitely, if you have something to say, you probably shouldn't go to Twitter. Yeah, definitely. Because you're going to get a lot of backlash, but. That's so true. Yeah, the Twitter, although you see a lot of celebrities nowadays just, just go to Twitter, to Twitter and, yeah, and, and try to hash it out there. ridiculous. And then almost always they end up apologizing for it later. Of and course. it's like, don't do it to begin with. Probably because yeah. their publicist makes them apologize. That is true. Yeah, I, yeah, I would. The publicist <laughs> probably tells them to do it in the first place. Exactly. Yeah, and then they're like, oh, I was just kidding. Uh, take that back, yeah. maybe. So, yeah, definitely so I think. ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's definitely for sure. Recently, Joe Jonas has decided to branch back out into the music industry by starting his new band, DNCE, which is just a dance without the A. Creative name. I, I guess the sad second child was feeling a little left out now that his older bro is married with kids and his younger bro is still a successful teen heartthrob. The band consists of Jonas, two other guys, and some girl who are probably all just in the band to get their name out there with Jonas, no doubt. This band is so sad, it's so bad and sad that they make new direct, One Direction look good. The new band has just released their first and last single, Cake in the Ocean. Joe, there's a reason you left the music industry and we should have kept it that way. Maybe I'm being too harsh, I don't know, but do you guys think that he should have stick to being an ex-boy bander or are you looking forward to his new music? Absolutely not. Yeah, I'm he's, not looking forward to Joe Jonas' he's music. Done. He's done. Well, I say Joe Jonas... You know what? I don't know. I just bashed you. I did. But you know what? I'm going to get a little soft here. Keep doing you, man. You know, try to strive to be the best that you can. I take back some of those words I just said, okay? Don't be that typical ex-boy bandit. Look at JC Chavez, or whatever his last name is. We don't even know his last name anymore. He's in, in sync, you know? Look at him. Who knows him? Joey Fatone. Sorry, Dancing with the Stars. That's the only thing he was ever on that was good after in sync. Lance Bass. Eh, okay, yeah, he's kind of done stuff after. Maybe not musically, yeah. but, you know, Joe Jonas, don't be like them. Be a trendsetter. Be a trailblazer. Joe I feel Jonas. like Justin Timberlake is the only successful Abs yeah. boy band. Boy band guy, yeah. Boy band guy. I don't even Definitely know how to say Definitely the most like, successful. I just think I it's, I feel bad for Joe. Yeah. Because, I mean, Nick is... Nick. Uh, Nick. Nick's Nick. <laughs> Nick yeah. is Nick Jonas. Honest. I just yeah. feel like maybe he's doing it because cause Nick Jonas else. is now on Screen Queens. Yeah. And he's still making music, so I feel like maybe he's feeling a little left out. And then Kevin got the family. So I feel like he's kind of, like, lost. Yeah. So yeah. maybe with this new music thing, he's trying to find I mean, himself, at, at least is, you're doing something. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. At least you're doing something. It's a lot more than some other people. Yeah, I definitely. tell you that much. Yeah. Absolutely. You could be smoking crack. <laughs> Breaking news. Donald Trump calls Ron Paul ugly after calling Trump childish. You know, hard-hitting news that everyone wants to know in politics Apparently, Chris Christie is jumping on the Trump hate bandwagon too after seeing Carly Fiorini and Trump arguing about their different respective business experiences. Jeb Bush also called Trump an asshole after an argument they had about casinos in Florida. Wow, do their parents know that they're using such profane language? It's a, it's a shame Trump can't just fire everyone like he used to back on his hit reality show, The Apprentice. Looks like your balding toupee and signature catchphrase can't make this country think somewhat likable again. Is there even anything to say about Donald Trump anymore? I mean, how are people talking, taking him serious? <laughs> what do you guys think? I don't, every time I think of Donald Trump, I laugh. He's a joke. <laughs> Absolutely. He's a joke. Is, he, is this a... Uh, is this a serious thing? I think I feel like he, this is like one big like April Fool's joke. That's what I'm, I really like, do. When, honestly, when I, I was, I remember I was at work. I work at a sports bar, and I saw on TV it's like Donald Trump running for president. And I was like, no way. No. You know what I, I think? Like, no way. You know what I think people do who do that? They just don't know what to say on stage. Mm -hmm. If I go blank, I'm saying I'm running for president. Simple <laughs> <laughs> yeah. as Kanye that. West jumped on that. Yeah, Kanye West did that. Super fit. Well, Super fit. I mean, you look and he, you know Donald Trump's been on like talk shows. And he yeah. like makes fun of himself on there. So it's like. A, I don't know if you can take. I don't. I don't take him seriously. That's that's the reason why. Did you like, see his roast? I don't know. No. I didn't. Yeah, see that. if you're on a roast, then... you should not be president. <laughs> I just think that's kind of a, like if you're on a Comedy Central roast. I don't think that makes you a candidate. For <laughs> Sorry, president. Justin Sorry. Bieber. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he can't. He's Canadian, anyways. <laughs> Phew, dodged the bullet there. Seriously. Oh my. Yeah. I don't. I don't take him seriously though. I don't think a lot of people. I, every time I see like on Facebook, I see those people like talking about him. Like, yeah. oh, Donald Trump for president. I'm like, no. Like you were not serious. You were, this is an April Fool's joke. Yeah. Nobody knows it. During the Republican debate, he even like a serious matter, like something very professional, 
He like threw Rosie O'Donnell under the under the bus. Like Talks about came at Megyn Kelly. Yeah, he's oh, just yeah. trying to just do trying her to do job. job. Yeah, I think he just hates Mexicans. I, and he's not very so. fond of women either. He talks very badly about that them. Which I'm offended personally. So not good for you. Uh oh. Looks like trouble in paradise for the recently publicized publicly official couple Twizzle and Calvin Harris. Harris was spotted spending his free time in a Thai massage parlor, which according to Yelp, gives the best happy endings. Taylor has been trying to get an all uh, trying to get all sites to remove the story, but Harris two hour long venture to the parlor where he spent forty dollars per hour releasing his tension, but some sites haven't been budging. Budging. Yeah. Look, let's just hope the message was massage, was all it's cracked up to be, because we all know most guys who date Swift never have a happy ending. Can't wait to hear the lyrics for the new single, Taylor. Do you guys think that he was getting an extra hand in the massage parlor, or are we reading way too hard into it? I, I'm going to keep this one short. Uh, I think I think uh, we're reading too much into yeah, it. I think absolutely. so. You really think? Me yeah. just to let them do their thing. Yeah, I completely agree. Well, that's all the time we have for entertainment. Here's your weekly advice with Mary. Thanks, guys. We got a ton of letters over the summer, so let's take a look. Dear Mary, it's Maddie from Michigan. I think my boyfriend might be gay. He takes longer to get ready in the mornings than me, and he takes another 10 minutes just looking at himself in the mirror after he's finished. He knows purse brands far better than any woman I've ever met, and he cleans his shoes and irons his shirts three to four times a week. When I first met him, I thought he was a ladies' man because he's always surrounded by girls, but I later realized that it's because his only friends are girls. Also, he cried at the end of the notebook, and I don't even do that anymore. Our relationship is going really well, other than the fact that there is great potential he is flamingly gay. How do I break up with him? Well, Maddie from Michigan, I think your best option is to stay with him. He clearly takes care of himself and cares about his appearance, which is a very attractive quality in a man. If he is so constantly surrounded by women and only has eyes for you, he's obviously a keeper. And a man that knows women's, better, women's tastes better than women could be extremely beneficial. If he can differentiate Louis Vuitton from Prada, he'll know what to buy you for your birthday. So at least keep him around until then. It'll be like having a gay best friend, but one that you have to sleep with and take to family gatherings, which isn't so bad. You could be single. Nothing's worse than that. Dear Mar Mary, my name is Katie from New Jersey. I have a really hard time saying no to people. Every time my friends ask me to do anything or go anywhere, I automatically say yes. I think this spawns from my FOMO, the fear of missing out. If I say no, I'll never know what coulda, woulda, or shoulda happened. This is mostly a problem for me when I go out and meet guys. I guess you can consider me a flirt. Some of the girls I went to high school with would probably use the term slut. Anyways, we usually start with kissing, but it always goes further because I never know how to say no. Is there any help for me or am I doomed like Anne Hathaway from Ella Enchanted? Well, Katie, I understand the problem. I once gave a hobo my paycheck because he asked for money and I had no cash on me. I myself can never say no, but if you don't want to go further with a boy, here are some things you can say in replace of no or phrases that once said do not mean yes. Hopefully, they'll take the hint. I'm not interested, never, not in a million years, not now, absolutely not, you're not my type. Not ever, go away, I don't think so, I'm too drunk. I have a boyfriend, <laughs> when pigs fly, I have to leave, you have to leave. Ow, you're hurting me, ew. No thank you, please stop, you're making me uncomfortable, don't touch me. You're joking, right? I don't want to be near you, leave me alone. I appreciate your interest, but no. Nah, nope, nada, hell no. I'd rather sit on nine inch nails. Ain't nobody got time for that. I don't want to. I don't want you. Yeah, right. Stop. I have a disease that infects anyone within a five-foot vicinity of me. Hello, police. I don't like you like that. Get off of me. I'm a lesbian. I have better things to do. Not really. You ain't never going to have a piece of this. I have rabies. Talk to the hand. Shut, 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 shut your mouth. Get the freak away from me. Too bad. It's not going to happen. Sorry, not sorry. No way. Stop wasting your time. Stop wasting my time. I'm too wasted. It's a no from me. You're like a brother to me. I just want to be friends. Peace, punch, Captain Crunch. I got something you can't touch. Bang, bang, choo-choo train. Come on, girl, let's do our thing. Reese's Pieces, Buttercup, mess with me. I'll mess you up. As if, I'm 12. How about no? Not in any way, shape, or form. Psych, I'm asexual. The idea of kissing you makes me physically ill. I don't think that's a good idea. Never that. Please refrain yourself. Not, don't, I'm too drunk. Bye. I do not want to participate in sexual activities with you. Don't touch me there, that is my private square. Just don't touch me. 
Don't even look at me. I'd rather not, still no. That's a terrible idea, I'm not sure. I don't know, you're like a grandpa to me. I'm not into that sort of thing. I feel nothing between us. I would never have sexual relations with you. It's about that time of the month again. I'm about three seconds away from accidentally spilling my drink on your face. I have a penis. I'm 110% sure it's gonna be a no. Not any part of me wants any part of you. Go bother someone else. I can't, don't make me repeat myself. I don't want to be involved. I respectfully decline. I'm too young for you, bro. If we were the last humans on Earth and the only ones I could reproduce to save mankind, I would still say no. Dear Mary, my name is Rebecca. So the other day after my boyfriend left for class, I was getting ready in his room and I accidentally found something I did not intend on seeing. Since there are no mirrors in his room, I opened photo booth on his computer so I could make, put my makeup on. I noticed at the bottom there were videos of him, so out of curiosity, I opened one of them, and it was a video of him confessing his love to his ex-girlfriend. They broke up like two years ago, and the videos were really old, but I feel terrible that I stumbled upon them, and he has no clue I was inadvertently snooping. I don't know whether I should tell him I saw the video or not. What do you think I should do? Well, Rebecca, you shouldn't even feel sorry for snooping. What he leaves on his unlocked computer is fair game. I wouldn't even tell him you saw the videos. Just dump his sorry ass. How dare he love someone before he knew, he knew about your existence. And the fact that the videos are on his computer after all that time means he obviously still loves her. And who records video diaries of themselves anymore? This isn't 2005. Dump him not only because he's in love with another woman, but because he's a loser. You'll be better off without him. Well guys, that's our show. Tune in next week and thanks for watching.